Hi, folks. Welcome back. Great to have you here, Rush Limbaugh, here on the cutting edge of societal evolution. What does that mean? It means if you listen every day here, you will know well in advance all that's important. You'll hear about it here first. If you don't hear about it here at all, it's not worth knowing. You can trust that. Telephone number 800-282-2882 and the email address lrushbo at eibnet.com. This, this is interesting. A University of Colorado analysis of state-by-state factors leading to the Electoral College selection of every U.S. president since 1980. They've never missed. Forecasts that Mitt Romney will win the presidency. And he will win 320 electoral votes. 52.9% of the vote. University of Colorado analysis. It's not a poll. It's an analysis of state-by-state factors leading to the Electoral College selection of every president since 80. They haven't missed. The key is the economy according to the political science professors in charge of this thing. Kenneth Bickers of Colorado University Boulder and Michael Berry of uh, CU Denver. Their prediction model stresses economic data from the 50 states and the District of Columbia. It includes both state and national unemployment figures, as well as changes in real per capita income, among other factors. And they say this, based on our forecasting model, it becomes clear that the president is in electoral trouble. Now, according to their analysis, Obama will win 218 electoral votes. You need 270. And though they chiefly focus on the Electoral College, they do predict that Romney will win 52.9% of the popular vote. Obama will get 47.1%. Now, that doesn't factor a third party or minuscule write-ins. They just look at the two primary candidates. For the last eight presidential elections, this model has correctly predicted the winner. The economy has uh, has seen some improvement since Obama took office, this guy says. I don't know where he gets that, but regardless, so what remains to be seen is whether voters will consider the economy in relative or absolute terms. If it's the former... If they consider the economy in relative terms, the president might receive credit for the economy's trajectory and win a second term. In the latter case, absolute terms, Romney will pick up a number of states that Obama won in 2008. Now again, these guys model correctly predicted all elections since 1980, including two years when independent candidates ran strongly. 1980 and uh, 1992. And it also correctly predicted the outcome in a 2000 race. Al Gore received the most popular votes, but George W. Bush won the presidency. They predicted that. Now, while, while many forecast models are based on the popular vote, the Electoral College model developed by these guys is the only one of its type to include more than one state-level measure of economic conditions. In addition to state and national unemployment rates, these guys look at per capita income, which indicates the extent to which people have more or less disposable income. Research shows that these two factors affect the major parties differently. Voters hold Democrats more responsible for unemployment rates, while Republicans are held more responsible for per capita income. So you can see how they arrive at their conclusion. They haven't missed since 1980. They are predicting that Romney will win 320 electoral votes. And I'm if I throw myself in here. This this does not surprise me. You know me. I haven't held back. I don't have any scientific basis for my belief, just my gut. And I will admit, I make a lot of assumptions. I assume that a majority of the country is 
opposed to what's happening. I assume a majority of the country does not want to be a bunch of takers. And I know that many of you disagree with me. But these guys say in in 2012, what is striking about their state-level economic indicator forecast is the expectation that Obama will lose almost all of the states currently considered swing states. These guys predict, based on their data that hasn't missed since 1980, that he will lose North Carolina, Virginia, New Hampshire, Colorado, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Florida. Now, in Colorado, which went for Obama in 2008, the model predicts that Romney will get 51.9% of the vote, Obama 48.1%. But they did, and it would only be right to mention this, they did, they did provide some caveats. Factors that they said may affect their prediction include the time frame of the economic data used in the study and close tallies in certain states. The current data was taken five months in advance of the election, and they plan to update it with a more current model and more current data in September. And we will eagerly anticipate that report. A second factor is that states very close to a 50-50 split may fall in an unexpected direction. Let's assume for the sake of the fun of it, that these guys are right. I, I, I want you to imagine election day plus one. The day after the election, if the Democrats lose, North Carolina, Virginia, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Florida, if that happens, there is going to be hell to pay like you haven't seen. If that happens, no way they can charge fraud. Well, won't stop them, maybe. But if that happens, you are going to see one of the biggest soul searches you've ever seen for a while. And then it won't take them long to get back on track of blaming the stupidity of the voters. Which is something that they carry with them each and every day. And that is contempt for average people. Now, the Washington Times, David Boyer's story, poll shows Romney closing gap with Obama in the swing states. As the Republicans head to Tampa to nominate Romney for president, the contest with Obama is narrowing in the 10 battleground states that likely will decide the election. Since the 1st of August, Romney's gained ground in eight of these 10 states, and two of them, Wisconsin and Michigan, are now considered too close to call by some of these pollsters. Obama has expanded his lead only in New Hampshire. Everywhere else, it's tightening. Significantly so. And it's tightening in polls that have the, uh, the, the, the far out of reality weighted Democrat sample. The AP poll is the late, the AP GFK poll is, is, uh, in that poll, Obama was up 10 points in May, or maybe it was June. He's now up four, losing ground rapidly, but it's a poll that has an outsized Democrat sample. If it was the, I saw an analysis of this poll. If this poll, I mean, it's cooked. This, this latest AP poll with GFK is cooked. If this poll had an accurate party sample that reflected turnout, on Election Day 2008, Obama would be a point down in the latest AP poll. And a guy named Jason Johnson here, who is a professor of political science at the esteemed Hiram College <clears throat> in Northeast Ohio, said, the reason that this is all tightening up is with the... It has to do with people's frustration with Obama rather than an increased appreciation of Romney. Well, duh, that's not a surprise either. It's exactly what I thought would be the case. I thought this was always going to be a referendum on Obama. And to the extent that Romney and uh, Ryan can make themselves likable, then that's icing on the cake. 
But this always was going to be a referendum on Obama. It all, it still is going to be a referendum. I don't care what the Obama campaign tries to say. I don't care what the drive-by media tries to say and how they try to slant this and how they try to portray it. This is going to be a referendum on Obama. He is not the likable guy he was. I don't care what anybody says, folks. They, he does not have that aura that he had in 2008. It's blown. His cover is blown wide open. And he is seen to be human and incompetent at that. Puts his pants on one leg at a time just like every other guy. And nothing messianic here. Hope and change gone. And don't forget the poll of the toddlers, the 18 to 29 year olds. They're claiming that they are so upset that they're going to turn out in record numbers. Another interesting poll, Washington Times. What's more important than ensuring that children get a better education? For most Americans, this election cycle, it's the federal budget. Do you believe this? As the regime and Obama continue to assail the Republican ticket for pushing a budget blueprint that they say would cut education, which it doesn't. They're in the cut anywhere, anywhere. Not yet. Polling data that emerged yesterday shows the vast majority of Americans think getting the country back on solid fiscal footing uh, footing trumps increasing school funding. Hallelujah! Gosh, I hope that, 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 and that makes so much sense to me. And it tells me that we're not yet a majority nation of morons. And this is the Tea Party, folks. This is the Tea Party. When you see this poll and this result, that more Americans want our fiscal problems solved before school funding goes up, that's the Tea Party. And I'll tell you what else it means. It means that at least the people in this poll fully understand that our problems in education are not money. We're spending plenty. It's who we have teaching kids. It's what they're being taught. It's the curriculum. I mean, you've got high school seniors can't read their diplomas. We have to have job training centers for people to come out of college. What the hell? Why does anybody why do we need one job training center if we got a decent education system? What's the point of education? Among other things, teach people how to work is to help focus them and educate them toward a career and citizenship. But see, it's not for the Democrats. Education's indoctrination. And after you've indoctrinated, then you send them to the work training center. Because education's not about a career. Education's not about getting a job. Education is where your propaganda dies. Education, schools at all levels that's that's where you inculcate your ideology this is a Gallup and Phi Delta Kappa International Education Association survey 60 percent 60 percent of Americans think it's more important to balance the budget than to improve the quality of it folks 24 years ago if this question had been asked of people, it wouldn't have registered. Balancing the federal budget wouldn't have mattered to anywhere near a majority of the American people. Change is ongoing and constant. Brief time out. We'll be back. Your phone calls are up next.